Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect. I hope you guys are doing amazing and making it an awesome day. So I have a question for you. What do you think is seam? Well, seam simply means a border, right? So what do you think when we say a seamless pattern or a seamless video loop? Well, it simply means that if you place a seamless piece of media back to back, and if you look at it or play it, you won't be able to tell what is the end and what is the beginning. That creates a seamless piece of media. Now, what is the trick to making anything seamless? You just have to keep in mind that the ending has to be the same as the beginning. Isn't that interesting? Now, there are lots of ways and techniques to do that. Today, I'm going to share with you a very simple one that also a six-year-old can do. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back at the magical world of Photoshop and let's drag and drop in the video files. So here we are in our Finder or Explorer, depending upon the operating system you're using. And I have a clip of the waterfall. Now keep in mind, this technique works best with rain, waterfall and stuff like that. For more complicated scenarios, there will be more complicated techniques. So let's just drag it and drop it into Photoshop. Now I'm just going to work with the 1080p clip. By the way, this video clip was sponsored by Envato Elements. If you want to follow along, you can also download the preview video for free using the link in the description. So let's drag it and drop it into Photoshop right over there. Now, as soon as you drop it, you will see a video group created. Now we don't need any video group, so you can just simply right click on it and just ungroup the layers. Right? You will also see a timeline. If you don't see a timeline, just go to window and make sure timeline is checked right over there. Once that is checked, you will be able to see the timeline. Now drag the timeline from right here and drop it at the bottom. Just when you begin to see the blue highlight, drop it there. It'll stick to that. Now keep in mind, we have to make the ending the beginning. So when it ends, it goes back to the beginning and the cycle continues forever. For that, let's see how long is the video. So if we just make it a little larger by using this slide slider right there, take a look. This is about 10 seconds, right? So all you got to do is to go to about five seconds or a little before that. And then with the scissor right over there, we have to slice it. But right now it's deactivated. Scissor is grayed out. You know why? Because the layer is not selected. Make sure that the layer is selected. Then click on the scissor. It's broken down. Now, one of these clips is going to act as the beginning clip and one of these clips is going to act as the end clip. So let's name the layer on the left side of the slide as the end clip and the other one as the beginning clip. Now make sure that the end clip is at the top and the beginning clip is at the bottom. Now let's make it a little smaller so that you can see everything. Now all you have to do is to move the end clip just above the beginning clip. Just make sure that even if the beginnings don't match, you just have to make sure that the ends match. Okay. And make sure it's not extending. For the end clip, it should not extend beyond this. It should not extend beyond this line of the beginning clip. All right. Now, can you already guess what we are doing right here? Now, we slit right over here. So this frame we know at the beginning of the beginning clip is going to be the same as the end of the end clip, right? So this clip, I'm going to repeat that again for you. So this last frame of the end clip will be in continuation to the first frame of the beginning clip. Why? Because we slit it right here and we moved the end clip to the top. So how do we make the end appear more gradually towards the end so that in the end we only have the end clip visible and nothing else and we can do that with opacity so let's just click on this drop down right here now just to be clear what did we learn before we head over to opacity we want the beginning area of the beginning clip to show up and the end area of the end clip to show up. We don't want the end clip to cover the beginning of the beginning clip, right? So let's select the end clip layer, move the timeline to the very first beginning of the end clip right in over here. You can also get a little inside, click on the keyframe icon for the opacity and then set the opacity of the end clip to 
zero right here. Now, as it goes gradually towards the end, we want it to be absolutely smooth. At the very end, we want to create one more point of the opacity and this time, let's set it to 100. So therefore, towards the end, the complete end of the end clip shows up and towards the beginning, the complete beginning of the beginning clip shows up. Let's make the view smaller so that you can see everything and also select both of these. Select the first one, hold the shift key, select the second one and move both of these to the very beginning. And now let's play it in a loop to check. By the way, you can play it in a loop by clicking on the gear icon and just make sure loop playback is checked. And now let's play it. Now there are little hiccups. It's just a preview issue. When you export it, you won't have this issue. The video seems to be ready. Go to file export and then save for web. Now keep in mind, whenever you're creating a GIF, if you have a very long video, just shorten it. If you have a 30 second video or one minute video for waterfall, just cut it to 10 seconds and then start working on it. Just make sure the format you choose here is GIF right over there. You can also have 256 colors for more accuracy. Now it's going to take a lot longer and the file size is going to be humongous. So as you can see right now, the file size is nearly 85 MB. That's huge, right? You can also lower the resolution from right here. So I'm just going to lower it to about 800. Aspect ratio is linked, so they will be adjusted accordingly. Let's apply that. The quality by cubic is fine. As you can see, it has gone smaller. All you have to do now is save. I'm going to name this waterfall 800 pixels and click on save. As you can clearly see, the size is considerably smaller to 16 MB. Now let's look at the actual size. So here we have waterfall 800 pixels dot gif 16 megabyte size. Let's play this and see if we have any hiccups as it showed in the preview. As you can see, it's very, very smooth. And we can't really tell what is the end and what is the beginning. So that's how you can create a seamless video loop and as a gif. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other feature, tips, tricks or tutorial. Oh, I forgot to do a recap. Well, all you have to keep in mind is just to make sure that we are creating a seamless video loop that the end is same as the beginning. Again, there are lots of techniques to do it. In this video, we used a very simple technique. We brought in the video in the timeline, we split it, took the first split at the top and gradually made it visible towards the end. Thank you so much for watching and I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all the support. I will see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.